Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Uh, last time, we accidentally uh, crashed this dude's funeral, who is apparently a pirate lord, but turned his life around or something. I don't know. We're probably going to find out more about this. Um... We do have a ton of people to talk to. We're going to be talking to a lot of people. We're going to be talking to all these people and then probably Harmonious over there. And then we got a couple of more loot spots, but let's get into it. Let's see who exactly we can talk to first here. Cass Bellardo. A man of intimidating age turns to you and sighs loudly. You can tell by his breath that he came to the ceremony after indulging in one or two glasses of strong drink. Your lordship, it must have been the emperor's providence that you that brought you here. Surely a figure as great as yourself would allow for a terrible injustice to, wouldn't allow for a terrible injustice to happen. The man grimaces. It appears that what the fuck? Obsequences <laughs> uh, does not come easily to him uh attack what the fuck dude just immediately you pirate scum <laughs> uh we haven't been introduced pardon me cas uh i have the honor of being the only child of the deceased oh he sends a mocking salute in the direction of the coffin you don't seem particularly grief-stricken over your father's death. If I was the one lying in that box, he wouldn't be crying his eyes out either. Cass bites down with bites out with sudden assicity. It takes a moment to call him himself. Uh, a son's feelings are complicated. I wasn't a good son. Old Dins wasn't a good father, but I do miss him in my own way. Yes. He always seemed timeless to me. Not just a bag of meat <laughs> and ugly ambitions, ambitions like the rest of us are. Okay. Uh, did your father ever talk to you about repentance? Oh, that's hilarious. Even <laughs> good old chaplain doesn't tell me to repent. Uh, he gave up me a long time ago. And my old man, he gave up on me long before that. He laughs nervously. What, you mean that repentance? Wait, you mean that repentance? Those stupid ghosts or whatever it was? I'm pretty sure my father did it himself, the senile old kook. And maybe it was my daughter messing around. Or maybe it was my daughter messing around. Where else could those words have come from? I don't know what he's talking about, honestly. <laughs> uh, what words are you talking about? Oh, you don't know? Out of the blue, writing started appearing on the walls of his house in just one word. Repentance. Big, scrawling scribbles like a child's handwriting. The first one appeared about ten or so years back. Uh, they help... They help kept whispering about it. Uh, being the work of ghosts. Ooh. <laughs> but for some reason, the old man didn't want to do anything about it. He told me not to. D and he told me not to. Uh, the writing amused him somehow. Whenever he s see repentance scratched on the wall, he'd just grin. Adira turns to you and shakes her head. It would be good to take a look at that writing. If I had to guess, it doesn't sound like the warp influence to me. If something really did take up residence in that house, it would have been a bigger splash in ten- It would have made a bigger splash in ten years. Like a dozen big corpses. Interesting. What did he die of? Age, debauchery, old wounds. By the end, my dad was <laughs> more implant than man. Especially after the assassination attempt. People tried to kill him, you see about 12 years ago. And what is this injustice that I'm supposed to prevent from occurring? Well, he grimaces, the law, lawful heir 
is being robbed of his inheritance. My dear father left his entire fortune down to the last coin to some nobody, a certain Fidelio, who hasn't even bothered to come to the funeral, and I'm left with nothing. Do you think that's fair? Interesting. Your nobility, you of all people must realize just how wrong and unacceptable this situation is. So I thought, maybe you could lend a hand somehow. For the sake of friendship with the future keeper of the Bellardo fortune, me. And for the sake of justice, of course. Interesting. Uh, you seem kind of a dick, so I might not. But, uh... I wanna- I do wanna talk to this other fellow first. Uh, why did your father disinherit you? As if I know, the old man wasn't a heart-to-heart -heart sort of person. Right up until the announcement of his last will and testament, I had no idea he put me at a- in the da doghouse. Who's Fidelio? I have absolutely no idea. Zero. There's a will, there's a- uh... There's a will, there's a name, that's it. Maybe they're, uh, my father's by blow some brother or sister I never knew I had. Maybe they're a whore who brightened his final days. I get the feeling the that old Laos chaplain knows. He always knew, he's always known more about father's businesses than any of us, but he's kept quiet. What assistance do you seek from me? Sermio guests do not know who Fidelio or what he, she, or she looks like. Okay, your lordship, I've never even been in the presence of the person of your status, let alone talk to one. But I just thought maybe you could impose your will on the matter of the inheritance. It would be a great to find out who this Fidelio is too, true, but that's nothing. That's just my curiosity. Uh, I want nothing to do with this. He slumps a little. Okay. I just straight up declined him, I guess. I thought that would just be the end of the conversation. Uh, it's just not my day. When is it ever? Thank you for speaking with me. Goodbye. I'll talk to you again if I give a shit. Can I talk to you, first mate, Dagon? Dagon? A tall man who opened you at the entrance is shifting from foot to foot and keeping glances around with a gloomy expression. This is an honor, your lordship. Such an honor. Could you spare a minute of your time? I have a request to make. You never introduced yourself. I'm Degan Othio. Othelio? Othelio? I don't know. Uh, I was the first mate on Din's ship. I mean, Master Bellardo. Uh, given the deceased's former occupation, I have a good idea of what role you played on his command. He smirks. <laughs> they used to call me Torch. He's Jerry Can. I'm Torch. Those were the days. How did he die? Badly. He went downhill real fast. Just a year ago, he still was still living it up, storming the slum asteroids to shoot riffraff and mutants. And then, all of a sudden, he was done. His old wounds had caught up with him, and uh, and he had plenty of those, both from the old days and more recent ones. Like when he tried to bump himself off 12 years back. I think I, I think it was. Oh, when somebody tried to bump him off. I'm, I'm an idiot. I was like, what? Uh, did he ever mention repentance to you? Psyker. Uh, no. But I know what you're talking about. The scribbles in the home, right? Yeah, it happened. All right. <laughs> the writing just appeared out of nowhere. On the walls, on the mirrors. Uh, they, and always the same word, repentance. I told him to give a, get a Psyker to check out his house for sorcery, but he said no. Too pricey, I guess. He said something about how he had already paid too much for repentance. Uh, not a lot of psychers around, and a single one of them will cost you as much as a team of top-notch bruisers. Hey, listen, friend, how long... How long did that go on, the writing? Anything else strange happen in that household? Flying knickknacks? 
furniture growing tentacles, people dying for no reason. Oh, all kinds of things happening, my girl. Uh, things going flying, people dying to servants, that is. Whenever we felt like remembering our glory days and getting sloshed on half a jug of the good stuff, that's when it would happen. I remember one time we decided to see who could carve open servitors in the dark the quickest. <laughs> Dragon grins, then catches himself and glances at you. All right, serious talk. Nah, nothing like that in that house. Uh, nothing sorcer sorceress apart from the writings. As for when it began, Xenos knows. 10, 12 years ago? What do you wish to speak about? Here's the thing, your lordship. I'll give it to you straight. I'm sorry. I don't know how to talk lofty folk to lofty folk. Well, Dins, that is Bellardo, uh, my old friend and boss died, and he left all he had and all... And he had a lot, mind you, to this Fidelio. That was kind of rude of him. That's no way to treat your friends. I get it. He left his useless son high and dry and a good thing too, but his old friend? So I'm thinking maybe you can step in and set things right. Intervene in the matter of the inheritance or I don't know. Why did Dens leave you out of his will? Old age, you know, his head wasn't the same anymore. Uh, yeah, that's got to be it. It was just too unfair to fly with him for 10 years and then get nothing for it. And who is Fidelio? Dagan winces <laughs> like he has a toothache. I wish I knew. I first heard the name when Dids kicked it. Maybe Fidelio is a whore who put a smile on his face in his golden years. And so Dins decided to give the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, what do you want from me? You're a distinguished sort. You can muscle in on this. You can talk to the chaplain. He's Den's execute executor. And ask him about the will. Or maybe you can find Fel Fidelio and have a talk with them, too. I mean, who'd want an inheritance that's not rightfully theirs? More trouble than it's worth, if you ask me. And trust me, old Diggin uh, can be of service to you if you need anything. I know that I know lots about footfall and other things. I can help with information, get you some solid lads for a job. You can use a guy like me. I'll consider it. I think that's great. The amnesac that you ordered your servitor to remove was poisoned. What a fascinating coincidence. Oh, okay. The the we found those those bottles over here in the corner here that were poisoned. Let's talk to him about that. He looks you in the eye. Poison? No, it can't be. Must have been a bad batch. Okay. I'll take my leave. Cool. Uh, I think victory awaits. We've got one more person. Who is? Adelia. The girl dressed in expressive, expensive clothes raises her sad little face to you and says with a serious voice, Hello. What are you doing here? Who are you and what are you doing here? Hiding. She hesitates for a moment. I thought I was going to cry and I didn't want to see anyone to see. My name is Adelia Bellardo. It's my grandpa there in that box. Oh, so she's the daughter of the, the dude we talked to earlier. Argenta's face softens. She reaches out and gently strokes Adelia, Adelia's hair. The tears will pass, Adelia. The tears will pass. The strength will return. And your courage will never leave you. How comforting. Tries to smile and just nods seriously. Where are your parents? My dad is Cass Bellardo. Uh, he's with the guests, and my mom ran away. They told me she hates my dad and my grandpa. Uh, I guess she hates me too. I don't know. It was a long time ago. I don't ever miss her anymore. I miss grandpa. He was the nicest. She presses her lips together and lets out a quiet, very unchildlike sigh. Have you ever heard of Fidelio? 
It's someone my dad is very mad at. <laughs> but dad is mad at everyone. At grandpa, mom, Dagan, Chaplin. Uh, did your grandfather ever m mention a word repentance to you? He did. That word kept appearing in this house, in our house, and nobody knew who wrote it. It used to make grandpa happy <laughs> when I was little. He always smiled when he saw it. But then later, when I was a little bigger and Grandpa was already old, it stopped making him happy. He was sad. He would just sit there and stare at nothing. And after that, when he got sick, she stops her big eyes glistening with tears. When he got sick, the writing started to scare him. More and more of it appeared. Repentance, repentance, repentance. Uh, even in his bedroom. One time he pointed at the word and said something, something very weird about dead eyes and about cobras going to class. <laughs> what? In the last months before his death, ra raved about dead eyes watching him. Abelard, who was looking at her with sympathy, narrows his eyes. What did you say? Cobra's going to class? Are you sure that's what your grandfather said? Of course I'm sure. When Grandpa was ill, I sat with him, and this time, and this one time, he just started talking about cobras. I was sad, but it was also a little funny. Cobras get to class, he said. Abelard strokes his beard. Perhaps this is an old Navy officer in me talking, but I am certain, almost certain he wasn't talking about the snake, but a cobra class destroyer. Cobra going to class, you see. Hmm, maybe. Uh, someone left some strange words in the Book of Remembrance as if they were from Fidelio. That wasn't your doing by any chance. Ha! That would have been a funny prank. Her eyes light up a little. But I don't play pranks. I was someone else. It was someone else. Maybe Fidelio did it very quietly. Or maybe it was someone who's not on the list, but also somebody who nobody would su suspect. I take my leave goodbye. Okay. All right, Chaplin. Up close, Chaplin leaves uh, an even stronger impression. A tall, burly man whose face and hands bear numerous scars. His entire visage seems to tell the story of many heretics who met their end upon their encounter with the adept, with this adept of true faith. Chaplain gives you a respectable nod. May Saint Drusus, Drusus, uh, protect you from illness and misfortune. I'm surprised to see a noble figure such as yourself here. Did you know Dins? I mean, Master Bellardo? I could lie and say I did. I feel like I've gotten to know him by now. Let's just lie. Let's get some XP. Interesting. I knew he kept secrets even from me and his friends and confessor. His friend and confessor. Then again, meeting you is not the only secret I've discovered. I still don't know who Fidelio is. Uh, the person who Dins made his heir. Okay. Call the parties involved. It's time to discuss the matter of the will. The esteemed Master Bellario was a pirate. Uh, Bellardo has left his worldly possessions to a certain Fidelio. Who is this mystery person? I haven't the faintest idea. And I thought that no one present knows... I think that no one present knows either. Or two do dozen hired killers would have already begun a manhunt for this Fidelio, uh, wherever they may be hiding. This is, after all, a significant inheritance, and the other playmates are not exactly pleased at being left out of the will. Chaplin's eyes narrow a little. I can see that you're intrigued. I must say I am too. Ever since... Ever since I've heard of my friend's death, I couldn't stop thinking about the mystery of his will. You have the Von Valencius name and title. Perhaps you can pull more out of the guests here than I could. 
here's the only clue I've got. Dins mentioned the name Fidelio to me only once. It was a long time ago. He was very drunk. He latched onto his my robe and said, I hope that these were his exact words. I owe Fidelio, if not for the repentance. How strange. Aren't you Master Bellardo's confessor, Chaplain? How could anyone other than you have told him to repent? I didn't, that's for sure. I can't imagine what he meant by it. Uh, given your speech at the ceremony, I take it you're not fond of the other attendees. Let's do that one. I'm a missionary of St. Drusus, and the truth of the Imperium speaks through me, so I see no point in pretense. All who have gathered here have one goal, to buy the chunk out of Denza's estate. Ambition and aspirations of wealth are not immortal, immoral in and of themselves, but Chaplain Grimaces. It's just that I'm sickened by the thought that such a great man has left behind nothing but a pile of human refuse. <laughs> His son is a drunk and a weakling. His friend, Diggin, the one who greeted you at the entrance, is a dim-witted brute with an incredibly bloated ego. His widow made off with the family yacht in the direction of the Maw while his body was still warm. With an entourage of five brawny, good-looking young fellows. Interesting. Uh, he was a pirate. He chuckles. The scar on his face grows even more prominent. Do you know why they call me chaplain? It's because I was a priest on Denza's ship in his wilder days. Uh, if you're surprised, you shouldn't be. There are plenty of heretic scum on among the pirates of the Expanse, but Dins wasn't one of them. He was a true believer, and he shared more of the Imperium's ideals than some of those stiff-necked officers. A leader with an iron fist and an iron will. Don't we owe our conquest of thousands of star systems to people like that? And the one he robbed, uh, uh, the ones he robbed were mostly types that no true, that no true subject of the Imperium would shed a tear over. Xenos, heretics, none of them, oh, not all of them, of course, but the Emperor will judge Din's was a decent man, if he was a decent man. Uh, I would like to discuss with you what I've been able to uncover him. Okay, so let's speak later. I guess let's keep looking around for people to talk to. None shall stand in my way. Maybe we talk to some of these guests. I'll be... Okay. Okay, doesn't seem like... Huh. Doesn't seem like there's anyone left on the map to talk to. Should we talk to... I feel like this is unrelated. I feel like it'll be just in this area right here. That's just me. This seems like a little side questy thing. Yeah, step away from the coffin. Okay. You got anything to say? Probably not. Can't even get to you. Okay. Uh, well, we don't know who this person is. Let's just talk to the chaplain and move this along. I would like to discuss what I've been able to uncover regarding the mysterious Fidelio. I am listening. So Dens mentions Fidelio and repentance. Yes, but what could it mean? I think I might know the answer. I'm listening. Clearly, it's his desire to atone for his past. The influence of the warp entity, it settled in Dins' home and poisoned his mind. It could be a name of a ship, for example. Uh, it's an item of sort. And probably one of great value, a weapon, possibly. I don't know just yet. 
They did mention it was a ship, a Cobra class ship. His eyes flash sharp, flash momentarily. Hmm, a ship called the Repentance. I'm not sure, but you might be right. Now that you've said that, I've remembered an interesting detail. About 12 years back, there was an attempt on his life. Not many could have even gotten close to him, let alone wounded him. Uh, but that, that, that assassin was a master of her craft. Din's always had a hearty, was always a hearty fella. And <laughs> that's what saved him. That and his trusty implants. But the medics pretty much had to put him back together from scratch. When he finally emerged from the hands of the Sawbones, months after the attempted assassination, he kept chuckling about her being a sharp one and that she was real angry with him for burning her father or her husband, I don't recall. And he was a ship captain. I vaguely remember that conversation, but I'm almost certain that the ship was called the Repentance and that Dins even knew the name of the captain uh, and the proud would-be Avenger. The woman's name was Le Leona or something like that. And her last name, I wouldn't be surprised if it sounded similar to Fidelio. So you think this woman is our Fidelio? It's my best guess. Let me remind you what he said. I owe Fidelio, if not for the repentance. Who else could he have been indebted to if not the avengeful daughter or lover or whoever she was? A captain he killed, of a captain he killed. It would be very Din's thing to do. Uh, to leave all money not <laughs> to his wimp of a son. Not to his idiot first mate, but to the cunning lass who almost killed him. That's interesting. What happened to this woman? She got away after the attempt. But I know that Dins sent mercenaries after her almost immediately. Whether he found her or not, that I do not know. It seems unlikely he did, because if he had settled the score with her, he wouldn't then go and put her in his will now would he well, looks like we've cleared out the repentance part seems so if we'd guess right all that's left is fidelio and the will not long before his death he mentioned about dead eyes looking at him hmm that is strange who could have looked at him like that in his own home some errant servo skull that was passing by? Maybe it was nothing more than a dying man's delusion. Um. Huh. Uh, there's an entry in the Book of Remembrance about repentance. The writing looks fresh. Could Fidelio have left it? Ha! That's odd. I've been watching the guests and I know everyone here. If you're not Fidelio, then no one here is Fidelio. Uh, well, unless they were unable, were able to get in undetected. Ooh, logic test. The area around the book is completely open. If Chaplin is telling the truth and he really does know all the guests in sight, then the words could only have been left by someone with free run of the courtyard, someone who wouldn't attract attention. Okay. Huh. I have a serious suspect that someone here wanted to kill Fidelio. Uh, that's all I've been able to learn so far. Let's go over everything we know. Den supposedly left his entire fortune to Fidelio, a woman who wanted to take revenge on him for killing a captain of a ship of the Repentance. The word Repentance is written in the Book of Remembrance, and the entry is new. Does this mean our Fidelio is somewhere close by? Uh, we also know something about dead eyes and the fact that the courtyard is completely open. 
I don't think an unknown person could have gotten in here and left those words in the book. Well, Lord Von Valencius, now it's all in your hands. I'm no sleuth, and I don't know what to do with all these clues. If you have some thoughts about Fidelio's whereabouts, find her. If not, come back to me. Uh, we still need to send Dens on his way and deal with the matter of his estate. Leave all the clues I identify have been found. Only one step remains to unmask the mysterious figure. Well, fuck me. Uh, I'm just gonna go click it on people, I guess. Servitors. Maybe I go to talk to her again. Maybe she has more to say on this matter. Girl rolls her eyes, blah, blah, blah. Or raises her eyes, serious. Okay, so that's not good. I'll lay claim to the stars. Hmm. Servitor. Oh, did I accidentally click on this? Oh, what the fuck? Did I accidentally click on this? Uh, <laughs> uh, if you don't know what to look for, it would be easier to overlook this servitor, which may have been a woman once. The servitor's implants, the mechanical nature of its movement, the empty gaze. It's all there, but are you... F ah, shit. Oh, I did hit. Are you Fidelio? Silence, the servitor's eye eyelids flutter slightly, its gaze staring off into space, deep inside a single human eye. It's a hu single human eye, dark as well. Dark as a well. A spark seems to flicker. Or is it just your imagination? Repentance. Yo. A single word causes the servitor's body to twist into a violent spasm. Something akin to a sob or a growl builds in its throat, and its mechanical appendages jerk convulsively. Gained 154 experience. Noise. Uncover the idea. Okay, let's fucking go, dude. I fucking accidentally clicked on that guy and it fucking worked out. Chaplin's tall figure appears next to you. So this is our heir, right? He pauses, mulling it over, then gestures for the administratum clerk who gave the opening speech to approach the inventory of Din's possessions. What does it say about this servitor? Let's see here. Let's see one moment. Mm, mm. Selection or section B17-40 personal effects of the deceased subsection servitors. Here it is. Ah, this is a one of a kind this is a rare one-of-a-kind unit commissioned personally by Master Bellario 12 years ago. A main function of the servitor is cleaning the house, bedrooms, vestibules, bathrooms, and according to the Master Bellario's wishes, Alardo's wishes, its free will was completely eradicated, and the parts of its brain that regulate pleasure responses were destroyed. But to a large extent, its memory and awareness were preserved. Oh, that's actually super fucked. <laughs> God damn. So that's the bitch that tried to kill him. And then he made her into a servitor and took away her willingness to be happy and her fucking free will but kept her memories and awareness? Oh my God, that's horrible. Chaplain, is everything clear to you now? Can a servitor even inherit? Uh, Chaplain, is everything clear to you now? I believe so. I, I didn't tell you, didn't I tell you that Dins, after he survived the assassination attempt, went through a whole squad of mercenaries to hunt down the woman who tried to kill him? Looks like he found her. Nods to the servitor. She was allowed to keep her memories with some semblance of awareness. So I suppose the mystery of writing repentance both here and in the book and back at Din's house was done by her. The question that remains, of course, is why would Din's decide to make a servitor his heir? This is either his last and cruelest joke 
or is an incredibly ham-fisted attempt to make amends on his deathbed? I'd like to believe that it's the former. Can a servitor even inherit? This matter requires further investigation. We will have to go over the codices, bylaws, statutes, uh, regulations from the last 400 years or so. The clerk pales a little, <laughs> uh, but we'll find an answer sooner or later. Or we could ask Lord Captain Vol Von Valencius to settle the matter in the name of his dynasty. This is footfall, after all. If a rogue trader says that a servitor can inherit, then that's how it's going to be. Summon everyone, and it's time to decide the fate of the Bolaro estate. As you wish, your lordship, this ought to be good. Okay. Holy shit, this has gotten so interesting. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Chaplain, um... I would ask the esteemed guest to stay a moment longer. I was going to announce Din's last will and testament after he was delivered into the flames, but the circumstances dictated otherwise. Uh, so we got, okay, hold on. And so according to the deceased will, all of Blotcher's fortunes go uh, not to his worthless son, Kaz, not to his brainless mate, Dagon, but to Fidelio, a mysterious new heir. However, I believe a certain party would like to intervene on this process. Chaplain looks straight at you and chuckles. Point at the servitor, who among you knows this woman? What about the story of the ship of the repentance? I wish to hear it all. I'm rogue trader Wilbur Von Valencius, and as such, I am vested to complete my authority on football. Uh, with complete authority on footfall, I hereby ex exercise that authority by voiding the will of the pirate Dins Bellardo and confiscating his fortune in its entirety. Oh, fuck. I could just take it all? Uh, the only one here who truly loved Dins is his granddaughter. She inherits his fortune. Uh, I found that Cas Bellardo should inherit the fortune by right of blood. Uh, Dagan and Dazen's mate resort to be the heir. Uh, let's hear about the servitor, shall we? That's the cleaner servitor from the house. Uh, what's there to know about her? Her only outstanding quality is that it's hilarious how she wobbles and flaps her grabbers about when you kick her out of the way. Uh, I don't know much about the servitor. I've got better things to do in my life than look at the furniture <laughs> and the ship. Mm, I think there was a co one cobra by that name. Or sounds familiar, sounds similar. We were pretty uh, gentle with it, boarding it, I mean. Dens was on top of his game that day. After the battle, he dragged their captain to the bridge, all tied up, and sat him at the table with us. Uh, we were going through the captain's amnesec. Hmm. So you're sure you want to hear everything? Uh, go on. Address Fidelio. The servitor today, will you will watch your enemies die. It's all in the past. Let us not spill any more blood, Captain. Take care of this poor soul. May she live out her days in peace. End her. A fascinating tale. Uh, go on. Anyway, the three of us sat there. Me, Dins, and the Captain of the Repentance. Uh, as the boys brought whoever was left of their crew one by one, and we popped them. I bet Cork Eye over there uh, remembers. He was there too. And so were the twins. Diggin nodded at a few of the other guests. We three watched, and when the party drew to a close, we threw the captain on top of the pile of his crew's bodies. And as, as was Din's way, torched them alive. Ugh. Those were good times. It's a real shame Din's quit. I kept thinking if he hadn't fallen for this, whatchamacallit, peaceful life, maybe he wouldn't have checked out. 
Maybe he wouldn't have lived for another 20 years. Delio is standing in a typical ser servitor prose, eyes staring into space, only the grips of the metallic appendage are trembling slightly, perhaps caused by a malfunction or perhaps by suppressed emotions looking for release. Fuck, dude. Oh, uh, I kind of just want to fucking put her out of her misery, dude. This is insane. Okay, I didn't want to shoot her in the face. That was a little much. Emperor, accept thy servant's soul. Chaplain's voice is a hollow voice. Then your lordship, maybe we should uh, discuss the inheritance. Reminiscing is nice and all, but we've got pressing issues to deal with. Uh, we're going to give it to her daughter. His granddaughter, I mean. The name on the will is Fidelio, but Chaplin pulls a hefty scroll out of his bag and tears it to shreds. All his life, Din's spat on laws. I think he'd understand. Ha! <laughs> the old man sure has thrown. Didn't expect this. The money is mine. Don't worry, sweetheart. Daddy will help you put your grandpa's riches to good use. Cass, have you finally gone death with all that drinking? The inheritance is Adelia's, not yours. If you make an attempt to coerce her, I, as Din's executor, will be forced to take steps. Chaplin puts a hand on the handle of his hammer. Does he have a hammer? No, he does have, like... He's got a gun. He's got, a, like, a big flamer or something. Oh, I see. All of you have it in for old Cass, eh? Well, I'm not afraid to leave... I'm afraid you leave me no choice. Daddy, what's going on? I'm sorry. I promise I'll be good. I'll give you all Grandpa's money. Oh, my God. Don't kill your fucking daughter, dude. Shut your whole brat. Listen up, all of you. Either the inheritance goes with me, or I blow this one's brains out. I'm gonna count to three. One, two... God, I hope we fucking shoot him. Please fucking destroy this man. Three. Yes, dude! <laughs> oh, that sucks for her. <laughs> Sobbing and crying her eyes out, Adelia smeared with the, her father's blood, shaking Cass's lifeless body. Dad, Daddy, get up. I'll, I'll give you the inheritance. Jesus. Gave the inheritance to the girl. Demons take you, Cass. Threatening to murder your own daughter at your own man's funeral was a new low for you. You always were a useless waste even in your final moments. What happens to the girl now? Chaplin sighs heavily as he looks at the weeping child. She got no one left now. Her mother ran off to the edge of the galaxy and her father, well, you saw it yourself. He bur his brow furrows. After a pause, he curses under his breath and nods. I'll look after her until she's grown up. I don't think I need to spell it out for you. A little girl with a tremendous fortune might as well paint a target on her forehead. I'll, if I take Adelia in, no one would dare hurt her, courtesy of the reputation that my turbulent past has earned me. And if they do dare, he casts a meaningful, uh, a meaningful sidelong glance at Cass's body. While I'm at it, I'll also help her not to squander her whole fortune. Maybe even earn something extra both for her and you. Both for, her, for herself and you. I think the best investment would be a merchant ship. I'll teach her the basics of void fairing and some reliable suppliers. Pull a few strings in the adamant administratum. And just like that, she'll have herself a decent empire. Enterprise. Profit factor gained four. Excellent. 
I'll venture a guess and assume that you wouldn't say no to a supply network that is robust and loyal to none but House von Valencius. Leave the paperwork and other formalities to me. I'll contact your subordinates myself. That takes area in their hand and so what do we do now? That was a good shot. Thank you. I was afraid I'd lost my skill after years of preaching, but it looks like it takes more than a couple of prayers to kill off old habits. That takes care of the inheritance. What do we do next? Chaplain looks at the coffin. I would like to say goodbye to my old friend. I imagine the crematorium has got its furnaces up and running already, but I feel it would be kind of sad to just shove Dins in there like that. He was known as the Jerry Can Dins, and he loved having his enemies drenched in Prometheum and burned. I think it'd be nice gesture to send him in, on his way in the same fashion. Thankfully, it's easy enough to procure a jerry can of Prometheum on Footfall. Abelard nods in approval, fitting. Chaplain gives you a sidelong glance. Want to stay and watch? With pleasure. Well, let's get started, I guess. Wow. Holy shit, they're really lighting them up. <laughs> Holy, okay. Wow. All right. Yeah, I knew he had a flamer. Jesus Christ. I thought you were just gonna set him on fire and not fucking explode him. My God. Uh, let's fucking loot these guys, shall we? Get a chain sword and a plasma pistol, another one. That's a really good plasma pistol. Shock baton. Leather armor. Well, that was an interesting development. <laughs> I won't did not, tolerate weakness. Did not think it was going to turn into a whole uh, who's who mystery. But we just luckily had enough clues to understand that it was a f ship and dead eye staring at him obviously was a servitor now that i'm thinking about it but yeah i think that was a appropriate outcome i i don't have any regrets with that really i think there could have been we probably gotten we could have probably gotten more profit factor had we taken his entire fortune for ourselves and i don't know what would have happened if we gave it to the servitor? But hey, man, that's the way it goes. <laughs> uh, I think next time we'll actually go and talk to uh, this dude over here. I think he's standing right here. I don't know. I think uh, yeah. I think we'll leave it off there. We did spend our entire episode just in this tiny little portion of the map, but goddamn, what a cool little uh, side quest, I guess. That was super interesting and fun. I really liked the uh, the the whole. Oh, he was a pirate, or maybe he was going crazy, or maybe it was the warp, or maybe it was, you know, maybe he was just wanting repentance for his life, you know, for his life of crime. But but uh, it turns out. No, <laughs> none of those things. Ah, oh, man, what a good quest. I will see you in the next one.